everyone. It's that time of year at the moment where I'm doing a lot of tax returns. So I wanted to give you a rundown of what you can put down as a tax deductible expense. I think there's a huge amount of confusion about it and it is confusing. I think the easiest place where I'm going to start with this is categorise expenses. And this is very broad brush stuff, but it should help. So think about the first one as travel and subsistence. After that, we've got equipment um that's sort of capital equipment sort of your furniture your offices uh, office space uh, stuff that you're going to put in there tables chairs computer equipment you might have to buy tools plant machinery that's one category another one is things like business development and marketing there can be big costs in businesses and think about those as well as a category and then also it's the general business costs. I think the general business costs is where people get a bit confused about it. So I'm just going to run through each one of those really, really quickly and give you the lowdown to do with it. Before I do that, I do want to just make a bit of a case about expenses. And uh, it, depending on your business, depends on what you can actually tax deduct. Let me give you a couple of ex examples. So I've got a client who's a professional dancer. And for, unfortunately for me as an accountant, my haircut is not tax deductible as much as I would like it to be. Um, but my dance client, if he is getting a haircut and it's styled for a performance and that performance name is named on the receipt, then it is allowable. But it gives you an illustration of that is tax deductible in his business because he needs to do it in order for his business to continue. So do think it just because something is tax deductible for somebody else's business doesn't mean it's tax deductible for you. But if there is a good commercial reason for you needing to incur that expense, then it's absolutely fine. Let's get back to those general broad categories. So let's look at travel and subsistence for a moment. So mileage, track your mileage, but it must be a business expense. So a business expense, a business trip, what is that? It's not your commute. You can't have your commute, unfortunately. So home to the office, that's not allowable. But if you had to run out to the bank, see your accountant, go and visit a client, then it's absolutely fine. If you take a member of staff with you in the car, you can actually get uh, a little bit extra as well, which is called uh, an, an advanced passenger payment. You can have 45 pence for the first 10,000 miles and five pence per passenger, but it must be a business trip. You can't take friends, friends and family. It has to be just for, for business. There is another way of calculating motor vehicle expenses um, and that's by putting the full motor vehicle expenses through. Most of our clients don't like to do that um, because it's called apportionment calculation and where you have to track all of your mileage. So what's personal? So your in terms of personal, it also includes your commuting as well, as well as your business mileage. And then we have to look at what proportion that costs and, and then look at what your insurance costs, your car finance agreement, just the interest element of that, of course, um, your car tax, the fuel costs, and then apportioned it out. It's quite complicated. But the other method of just tracking your business miles and claiming 45 pence a mile, um, that, that's called simplified expenses, and it's a simplified method of doing it. You can't chop and change between the two from year to year. You must make a decision about which way you're going to do it. Um, there, there are complex rules about cars, but just keep it simple for the time being and do your 45 pence per mile. Um, you can uh, have some um, cost through on the simplified expenses scheme to do with your home office use, uh, but I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, if you're traveling for work overseas, yes, of course, you can have your airfares, your hotels through uh, and uh, everything like that. But it must be a commercial reason for travel. You're traveling to a conference, for example, um, and, the, you know, you can't sort of... Um, sort of take friends and family with you on those trips uh, unfortunately um, if they happen to be traveling well you know later on that would be fine but um, if you were going out to a conference for example it must be you know provable that you were going for that conference and that there was a good commercial reason for you going to that conference I've got a client who was a keynote speaker for many conferences around the world uh, and he can put that through no problem at all 
In terms of your just general travel around the UK, if you need to put hotels through, again, there's no problem with that as long as you're going for a business trip. Claim your mileage to, to go on that trip, your hotel stay overnight, and you're allowed something through for subsistence. This is for you, just general food and things like that. As someone said to me recently, could you have a word with that client because he's putting his McDonald's breakfast through every single day? You can't just put your breakfast through. You you know there are rules to do with it. If you're leaving before six o'clock in the morning, then there is a you know the, a breakfast rule about that. What I try and tend to do is just put a reasonable value through. Don't uh, go over the top. You know if you were staying somewhere like. Um, a travel in uh, a, a travel lodge sorry or a holiday in um that would be fine and if you went to the pub next door there's normally a pub attached to them and you had um a reasonable meal of 20 30 pounds and even a pint of beer or glass of wine absolutely fine no problem at all with doing that just keep it within the realms of possibility uh, no michelin starred restaurants or foie gras please um Let's move on to the next section. I think that gives you a bit of a rundown of travel and subsistence. Um, the, if you're, you're buying equipment, um, depending on your industry, if you're working something like the construction industry uh, or it, even in my dance clients, for example, uh, certain footwear and clothing would be allowable. If you're buying clothing... It should be branded up. That's first and foremost. If you if you do an office job, I've got some nice tax deductible clothing, um, some lovely um, sort of jackets, um, padded jackets that all of my staff wear, and they're embroidered with the the company logo. We go to places like car garages, ice cream factories, all of those sorts of very cool places. So there there is actually a good commercial reason for us having that sort of stuff. Um, so we're, we're, you know, I'm protecting my members of staff. In terms of construction, if you need steel toe cap boots, fire retardant clothing, that's that has a specialist use. Yeah, absolutely fine as well. You can you can put that through. Fortunately, your general t-shirts, your jumpers, like I'm wearing at the moment, we can't just have our general footwear and clothing through. Um, so that that, that that's that's. Uh, sort of gives gives you an indication of that sort of stuff. If you're uh, a tradesperson. Then obviously tools, um, and actually for a tradesperson in a in a um, a sole trade business, putting your van through is absolutely fine. You can get full uh, capital allowance, a full deduction on your van costs uh, if you if you are a sole trader. Slightly more complicated rules when it comes to companies, but come and talk to us. That's where we do like to have conversations with clients about their their motor vehicles because it is really complicated. There's lots of really complex tax legislation, and fundamentally. The government don't like vehicles or at least those that emit co2 um big tax breaks on electric vehicles as well so but just do, do come and talk to us about that as well um if we're moving on to asset equipment if you needed to buy computer equipment like i'm using here to record this um all of that is fully tax deductible um some people might say well you've got to apportion some of that if you're running a full-time business uh, as a sole trader or within a limited company absolutely put the whole cost of that through at all if you've got a part-time business and you're working 20 percent then maybe put a portion it and only put 20 percent of that cost through uh, if you need specialist equipment for your business like specialist plant and machinery or you need a digger for example again that's absolutely fine desks chairs all of that kind of stuff that can go through I, i've bought some stuff to do video so my microphone i've got a second monitor so i can flash up my sort of notes when i'm doing this i've got a ring light uh tripod there i've got a bookshelf all of those things absolutely fine for you to to put through no problem at all um things become more complicated if you're thinking about buying property but come and talk to us about that it's, that's an accountant's job to, to advise you on those bigger bigger purchases as well what about business development and marketing that's another category i, I mentioned right at the beginning of this video um you know, if you're running Facebook ads or you need to employ the services of graphic designer, Google ads, you want to buy a, a, an advert in a magazine, anything like that, absolutely fine. Put it through your business. You wouldn't be spending it otherwise if it wasn't for your business. So make sure that you, you do do that. One thing that catches people out that they see in the sort of the realms of marketing just today, I've had a, a client, he's referred several other clients uh, to my business. And I said to him, do you know what? Why don't you come for a meeting and I'll treat you to lunch afterwards? 
that is not tax deductible. I'm really sorry, it's not. I didn't put it through my books. Um, I can still pay for it through the business. It's just I can't have the tax relief on it. Um, it, it it's just customer supplier entertaining, unfortunately, is, is, not, is not allowed. If you are entertaining your staff, on the other hand, yes, you can do that. You've got £150 per member of staff. Uh, plus another 150 for the kind of Christmas party at the end of the year. So you've really got £300 per member of staff. All staff must be included in that. But again, you can put that through as well. Don't confuse that with refreshments as well. Uh, if you need tea, coffee, um, milk for the office, you, you know, even a few apples or um, just a few little biscuits for meetings, that's classed as refreshments and it's fully tax deductible. So don't count that towards that either as well. Um, the other thing in terms of you might be buying subscriptions of software for in, to help with kind of business development and marketing again that's fine um, I use practice management software project management software accounting software subscriptions you know that's absolutely fine as well going to networking events uh, as long as they're business uh, there's a good business reason for going all of your mileage and the cost of entry to that networking event is, is absolutely fine and it's the same for exhibiting at a, a trade exhibition that's absolutely fine to put that through um if you need to undertake some training uh, for your business then yes that's absolutely fine to put that through as long as that there will be a commercial advantage for you doing so I've got no problem with doing that because you've got to undertake things like CPD points in my profession um, we're all, all often doing training courses and we've got to pay for those in order to keep our professional knowledge there that's absolutely fine I happen to learn French um, which I don't put through my business it's got nothing to do with the business I'm not looking to undertake any business in in France or with uh, people who speak French and nor would my professional indemnity cover enjoy me giving taxation UK taxation advice in a foreign language uh, so yeah that's absolutely fine um, gym memberships and physiotherapy it's very very sort of strict some people ask me about health insurance and all of that sort of stuff on the whole don't do it there are some you know a few sort of industries where that is allowed but you would have to be something like um a pro you know a professional trainer for example and if you injured yourself as a, a an athlete or even in some situations my dance client going back to to th th that example um the physiotherapy can sometimes be okay but it is very very strict and try to avoid putting through like cash health plans private medical insurance physiotherapy chiropractors it's a bit of a no-no um there's if you're in a limited company there's very strict rules about what's called p11d benefits that attract national insurance don't fall foul of those rules as well um finally website costs of hosting your website building your website uh, they can be very very expensive again that absolutely fine to put through as well the last category, just general business costs, things like employee costs. If you need to employ somebody, yes, you can put the cost of that employee through. No, no problem at all. Unfortunately, things like putting um, childcare costs through a company don't go there. There are very specific schemes to deal with childcare costs and something I'm oft, often asked about. Don't put it through the business. Um, there are Come and seek advice if that's if something that you, you need to do. I mentioned before about your home office use. Uh, if you work a lot from home, you can put through £6 a week for working from home. I know it's not a huge amount. We can apportion it out, but on the whole, when you start looking at that, if you looked at my house where I work at home, it represents a very small proportion of the house uh, that is only used a percentage of the time. Uh, and, and actually, when you work it out using what's called apportionment calculation, you tend to find that you're not, you know, better off. But premises costs, if we were to go and rent a really expensive business premises, that's absolutely fine no problem at all with with doing that um if you're running a full-time business putting your phone costs through uh, and your internet costs for that business through no problem at all same with the business insurance um any bank account overdraft charges that's absolutely fine um legal and professional costs if you need to employ the service of a business consultant or solicitor to draw up employment contracts or anything like that again it's absolutely fine to put that through 
Rules around accountancy and bookkeeping fees are slightly more complicated in a limited company for your limited company accounts, payroll, all of those VAT returns, all of that sort of stuff. Fine, put it all through. HMRC tend to say that for uh, doing your tax return, that isn't an allowable cost, but the element of bookkeeping is uh, is allowed. Um, come and talk to us about that. Um, we tend to sort of track our time in terms of the, the bookkeeping that we do for self-employed clients and we tend to find most of that fee is actually just made up of bookkeeping and the, the tax returns just to the kind of the finalization of that so you tend to find on a breakdown that a lot of that is uh, actually allowable for tax the, the general message here, I've given you a very t quick overview. People get really worried about the tax legislation. Don't worry too much about it. Don't take the mickey. I'm really strict with my own business. I only put stuff through the business that belongs in the business. I don't mix my personal stuff and goings on with the business accounts. Uh, having good account conduct makes it really, really easy. Having a separate bank account for your business. If you're a sole trader, definitely do that. People are put off by the bank account fees, but it's it's really a kind of sensible to separate everything. Use your business debit card. Uh, keep everything in one place. The final thought I'm just going to leave you on is that the key to saving tax is good record keeping. We're not multimillionaires. We run small businesses on the whole, and we haven't got sort of the resources to implement really complex avoidance schemes and as we've seen with those avoidance schemes over the years people like Gary Barlow and uh, ex-prime ministers as well have been caught out and HMRC have changed the goalposts rep respectively and caught those people out on the whole people are poor at recording their mileage I'll put my hand up I'm one of those people but I've used an app in the past called Mile IQ to record it. Made life a lot easier for me to just capture those business trips and categorise things in the right place. It's hard when the business is so busy to do it. But if we can just capture all the expenses we need to put through, it will lower the tax bill down uh, dr dramatically. Anyway, I hope that's really helped and you're going to feel a bit more confident about what you can and can't put through your business. Uh, and hopefully you'll get you know the right deductions against your tax and be pay the right amount of tax i think it's it's sad you know when people don't pay the right amount of tax and they're paying too much unnecessarily um hmrc revenue inspectors they're reasonable people i've met lots and lots of them i've dealt with lots and lots of them they're just professionals like me and if you've taken a really reasonable and careful and prudent approach to your business expenses there won't be any problems when you have a compliance check so don't worry too much about it if you've got any questions just let me know and thanks for listening bye